It's now been a few weeks since I saw Scream 6, and if you've seen my review, you know that I had a pretty good time with the movie. It was great to see Ghostface again and going on a killing spree in New York. It was it was a bloody good time, and it made me want to do another Scream movies ranking video. But since it wasn't that long ago since I did my last Scream movies ranking video, I decided I'm going to change it up a little bit and do a ranking of every single reveal of every Ghostface killer that we have gotten so far from worst to best. Now, obviously, this will be including Scream 6, so spoiler warning if you have not yet seen Scream 6. It's probably best for you to click off this video in 3, 2, 1. Tara was not the killer. Neither was Kirby. Or fucking Sydney, because I saw one video of someone saying maybe Sydney becomes Ghostface. No! Uh, but good times, good times. Uh, yeah, so, I got nothing else to say, so, without further ado, oh. Oh, sorry about that. Let me just squeeze in here. There we go. Anyways, without further ado, let's slice through this ranking video. Coming up to number 7 is going to be Roman Bridger, our Ghostface killer from Scream 3. Yeah, I know, not very surprising because this is like everyone's least favorite Ghostface killer, but yeah, I don't know, he really is just the most forgettable one. Uh, to my opinion, uh, but you do have to give him a little bit of credit. He is the only Ghostface killer that works on his own, unless it's like a secret Ghostface killer partner that he has that we don't know about. He literally is the only one that works on his own. So yeah, he's a pretty smart guy, but he is, he's still a bit of a fucking sook. Remind me not to sleep with him again. So yeah, Roman is basically Sydney's half brother because you know, Maureen Prescott gave birth to him after she was gang raped by one of the stab movie producers, which I don't know how I feel about that. Like, that's a pretty serious backstory for a movie that's like got really weird humor and really weird moments and just wacky characters. And then you got this really serious backstory, kind of weird. Um, there's this whole weird jealousy thing going on between him and Sydney. Like, he's jealous that Sydney got to live the life that he didn't get to, didn't get to live, which is understandable. But like, dude, come on, you're like you're a movie director. You're fucking directing like. That's, you're fucking directing Stab 3 and you're like, I don't know, it just, that, that's a pretty big deal. So, I don't know, this whole jealousy thing's kind of weird, but I guess you gotta remember that he is the mastermind of this all. He is the only Ghostface killer in this movie, so you can give him a little bit of credit. Uh, just a little bit. And there is a cool scene that, that's kind of fun to rewatch when you rewatch the scene of him calling Sarah and it's him on the other end and he switches his voice to Ghostface. You would think someone's pretending to be him, but it's actually him on the phone. So it's kind of a fun scene to rewatch. And yeah, I don't know. It's just his backstory and his reveal that's just kind of forgettable and like makes, makes him a pretty, like, like the least memorable Ghostface killer of them all. Um, but I guess I'll admit at the end of him getting shot multiple times by Dewey, fuck, he took that like a fucking man. He looked legitimately insane. So that was pretty cool. But it's just his reveal. It just wasn't that surprising. And his like motivation and stuff is just weird. And overall, it just kind of makes him the most forgettable Ghostface killer. You can give him a, a bit of credit, but overall, I just consider him to be the most forgettable one of them all. But yeah, moving on. Coming up to number 6 is going to be Ethan Landry, Wayne Bailey, and Quinn Bailey, the three main killers from Scream 6. The Kirsch family. One big fucked up family. So yeah, we got three killers this time around, which is very, very interesting. Um, but, of, you know, of course, it, we've, we've got the father of Richie, who was the killer from the last movie, which is very much a... It, it's a very Nancy Loomis type thing. Um, all over again, like when it was revealed, I was like, oh, this is just Nancy Loomis all over again. What the hell? Why are we doing Scream 2 again? Which is a little meh. Um, but it's kind of, it was kind of cool to see three killers, but I don't know. Ethan Landry, I wasn't very impressed by him. He gives out the, like the most typical ghost face killer performance ever. I wasn't very impressed by him. And also his reveal just wasn't that surprising. It was like, of course it was going to be him. I wasn't very impressed by him. Quinn was a little bit better. Like, she was a lot more whiny every time Sam or Tara would, like, talk shit about Richie. She would just, like, be like, shut the fuck up, you little bitch. And it, it was pretty funny. She was a lot more enjoyable. And, uh, yeah, just seeing two ghost faces in costume together going after the characters was actually really cool and interesting. And nothing, it's, like, something we've never seen before. That was great. And then both them both doing the fucking, like, wiping blood off the knives at the same time after stabbing Chad to death. That was fucking sick. That was really cool. So I didn't mind seeing three killers. It was actually kind of cool. It's just like, it was sort of a repeat of Nancy Loomis from Scream 2. And also some of the performances was just, it was just fine. And maybe we just, it could have been better maybe. Um, I don't know. And they were killed off really, really easily. Ethan's death was fucking brutal. Like the, st the stab in the mouth was fucked. And then, Quinn got a simple shot in the head, and that was about it. They were killed off pretty easily, but 
they were fine. It was kind of cool to see three killers finally in a Scream movie, but overall, maybe it could have been a little bit better. But I didn't mind it. It was okay. Moving on. Coming to number five is going to be Jason Carvey's reveal in the opening of Scream 6. This was a... This was a big surprise. This was honestly more shocking than the actual reveals of the, the actual killers from this movie in the finale. This was more shocking than that. This was great. Uh, I'm not going to put it at like number four and number three because it was brief and it was just for the opening. But man, this was a really nice surprise. This was great. I mean, like Flash Thompson, what the fuck happened to you? It seemed like you were doing really, really well. Bum, bum, busted! But yeah, this was way more shocking than the actual three kills reveal at the end. Like honestly, when he was raising the knife, I thought it was going to bam, cut to the title card and that would be the opening. But no, he slashed and it kept going. He was breathing and then he fucking took off the mask and he fucking just wandered off into the streets of New York. It was a very interesting opening. It wasn't much and it was just for the opening. So that's why I'm just putting it here on the list. But man, this was a great opening. Um, it obviously doesn't top the original because that was actually legitimately scary. This was just shocking and interesting. And I, I enjoyed this. This was pretty, this was really good. And that's all I can really say about it. This was a really great opening and I enjoyed it. It was something different and it was really good. Moving on. Coming back to number four is going to be Mickey Altuari and Nancy Loomis, the main killers from Scream 2. It sounds kind of weird, like just some college kid teaming up with some psychotic mother that met online or something. Like it sounds kind of weird, but the one thing that makes these two killers really stand out is the performances from both the actors of Mickey and Mrs. Loomis. They, but they both do a good job uh, performance wise. Like the, they both do a really good job at acting really psychotic and crazy. Uh, they, they both do really well, do really well, and, um, you know, the scene of Mickey pretending like Sydney's new boyfriend is like, you know, their partners, and pretending like they were working together was a really great scene, and then eventually shooting him, like, goddamn, that was evil. Uh, and yeah, Mickey, uh, he, he, he probably could have gotten more to do, but for what we got of him, I didn't mind him too much. And then there's Mrs. Loomis, which, yes, the motive is very simple, just kind of nor just revenge for, you know, because Sydney killed Billy. Uh, but, you know, I think it's a good twist. Like, you know, the killer being the mother of Billy Loomis, that's actually, that's a pretty cool reveal. It's a simple motive, but it's a pretty cool reveal. And, you know, the scene of, like, Cotton holding the gun, pointing it both at Sydney and uh, Mrs. Loomis was a pretty intense scene. And, of course, Mrs. Loomis was fucking psychotic and crazy, and the actress did a really good job. You could say it's kind of weird, weird, like, you know, she, she just started off as this random local woman and then becomes a killer. Sounds weird. And then this whole plastic surgery explanation or whatever sounded really weird. And also Mickey, he was kind of obvious. I mean, look at that dude. Look at the way he stares at everybody. Look at the way he's staring at Sydney. He just, he seemed a little bit obvious. But other than that, they were both pretty, pretty good. And Mrs. Loomis is also well known for killing, fucking killing Randy. Like, she killed Randy, dude. Like, She's not, she's pretty, she's pretty fucking evil if she fucking killed Randy, because everyone loved Randy. So, overall, I enjoyed these killers, I think they're pretty good, performances are really good, and I don't mind them, they're not too bad. Moving on. Coming to number three is going to be Richie Kirsch and Amber Freeman, the main killers from Scream 2022, the fucking toxic fans, oh boy. Uh, I wasn't, I literally wasn't sure about how I felt about these killers when I first saw this movie in theaters. I was like, what is happening? Who, who, what is their motive? What is this? I just wasn't prepared on how silly this motive was going to be. It was just, it was just toxic fans. That's it. Just a bunch of toxic fans who wanted to make a better stab movie because the latest ones have been really trash lately. So they want to try to make a better movie, I guess. And oh my God. And look, Richie was really evil and all, but Amber Holy crap, I think most of us have a bit of a strong hatred towards Amber because number one, she killed Dewey. She's the one who killed Dewey. Uh, that's great, thanks for that. And during the finale when she's fighting Sydney and Gale, oh my god, she would not shut up. She was constantly bragging about killing Dewey and then like, pretending that she's sorry for what she did and then not being sorry, then being sorry again. It was, it was fucking annoying. And then bragging about how she's about to kill Gale, oh my god. She wouldn't shut up, and she was so painful, and they did a great job of making me hate her. Holy crap, she was such an irritating killer. I enjoyed it, but oh my god, she was a pain in the ass. So, yeah, so Toxic Fans, I enjoyed it. I know some people probably don't like it, but I enjoyed it. And I do love the little hints of, you know, that these guys are the killer. Like, you know, fucking, we look, we, we look at, um... Sheriff Judy for the first time, and we just see Amber, like, giving her the death stare, like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking kill that bitch. And then we see when Sam and Richie go to meet Dewey, look at this fanboy. Look at him in the background. Holy shit, he is 
flipping out. He's like, holy shit, I'm meeting the real Dewey. This is absolutely insane. So I like the little hint. And then when fucking Dewey shoots Amber down to the ground, he's all fucking stressed out. He's like, oh shit, oh no. Oh, right, uh, fuck, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, fuck. So you can tell he was panicking that maybe, you know, he got Amber and she died. So I love those little hints. So there was nice little hints. That was fun. That was great. And you know what? I, I know a lot of people don't like the toxic fans and shit. It's, it's stupid, but I enjoy it. I've grown to like it a little more. And I don't mind it. It's fine. Moving on. Coming okay, to number two is going to be Charlie Walker and Jill Roberts, the main killers from Scream 4. Not gonna lie, this is more aiming towards Jill than Charlie. I don't really give a shit about Charlie. He was a pretty forgettable killer, and uh, all I can really give him credit for is that, you know, they both work together pretty well as fucking really aggressive ghost face, ghost face killers, because, yeah, they're, 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 they're good. They're fucking brutal as hell in this movie, but Charlie was just a pretty forgettable killer. This is more aimed towards Jill. Uh, performance by Emma Roberts, she did a really good job at being this fucking, I don't know, jealous, looking for fame, and that's all she wants, and that's what, what her motive is, she was just got jealous of Sydney's fame, and it's all about Sydney, and she got, she got so fucking pissed off, and then she eventually snapped and lost her mind, and now she wants to get, you know, become the sole survivor, kind of like Sydney, in a way, um, uh, and get all the fame that, she, you know, Sydney got, uh, and yeah. Uh, and it was very simple, kind of like Nancy Loomis. It's a very simple uh, motive, but I really enjoyed it. And uh, it, was, it was a really good performance. And, you know, of course, the whole scene of her torturing herself to death uh, to become the sole survivor was a fucking probably one of the best scenes in the entire movie. That was awesome. And it was also pretty hilarious. And we even end up at a hospital where she's like the first ghost face killer to almost get away with what she did. Uh, and yeah, we're in a hospital, and I do like how this tries to do, you know, things a little differently. It's nice. And, you know, she's such a bitchy killer as well. And it's crazy because they treat her character as such a friendly, like, not at all a, a killer. Like, they treat her so friendly. Like, like, look at this. What's your favorite scary movie, Olivia? That's a fucking killer right there. Holy crap. And I'll give Charlie a bit of credit. You know, they, they, they work well together as really aggressive, brutal ghost face killers. You know, look at this shit. Look at that. What the fuck? Um, but yeah, I'm giving Jill most of the credit because, you know, good performance and uh, very memorable. And uh, it was fun. I really enjoyed it. So yeah, moving on. Of course, coming up to number one is going to be Billy Loomis and Stu Mocker from Scream 1. It's a scream, baby! Yeah, uh, of course. They just feel like the most realistic killers. Well, as long as you can go along with, you know, Matthew Lillard's really cartoony performance. I wouldn't say it's cartoony, i just say he's fucking psychotic and fucking crazy. He just, well, he's just killing for fun. He just wants to kill people because he's fucking bored and he wants to do it for fun. He just wants to kill a bunch of people with his best bud and have a good time. It's, it's crazy. Um, and yeah, I don't know, something just feels really real about these two compared to everybody else. Like, I enjoy, enjoy most of the other killers, but these two just feel the most real and scary. And I don't know, they just feel, no. Yeah. And also because the OGs, they're, they're, they're the OGs, of course, they're the ones that started it all. So you got to give them a whole bunch of respect. Um, and yeah, I don't know, something just feels really real and scary about these two. It could be because of the whole backstory about, you know, you know, about Maureen Prescott dating uh, Billy Loomis' dad, which eventually made Billy Loomis' mum leave him and, you know, abandon him pretty much. And that's what drove him to want to kill Cindy's mum. And yeah, I don't know. They just feel like the most realistic and scariest killers. And that's all I can really say. Uh, I don't know. They feel the most scary, most real. And I think, and they're, they're the OGs. So that's why they're here on the number one. Alrighty guys, this is gonna be the end of my ghost face reveals ranking video. Hope you guys enjoyed and if you're wondering who's under this mask, you're about to find out. Oh shit. Surprise, Surprise everybody, everybody who's, who's still, still watching. watching. We all go a little mad sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Oh shit.